Hey, hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and not broken sports anymore. I can actually move around like every normal person again. It feels good to be able to walk in non-slow motion. How are we doing, guys? Welcome. I hope you guys had a great day. I hope you guys are ready for another episode of the Barcelona career mode in which we go for a couple more transfers. Potentially, we have around 84 million still to spend and the one position that most people are looking at for this one transfer is that CDM position still. Or we could go ahead and make signings for the reserves team. And that's something that I've been thinking about. We were telling us that we want to have a failed one the kids reserves team basically. Or failed one the kids as many of them in this team as possible. And this team has been evolving. Let me just put it that way. Let me just quickly revamp this team. And then show you what we have available in terms of failed one the kids and youth academy players that can go straight into this squad and then i think we could make some signings for this team and just keep bazoor for the main squad that has been something that i've seen in the comments a lot of people really like bazoor like myself i also really enjoy him in a team and i think we might just focus on this team to make it even more interesting and bring in a couple more failed one the kids into this squad so if you guys are enjoying the episode make sure to hit that like button and of course man subscribe if you're new it's just easy just do it so this right now is our reserves team la Rauri, the talent from the youth academy now on that left wing estrada keeps on playing striker at the moment but is quite low rated uh, and has lost potential sadly Clivert on that right wing, Fuentes at Cam, Onyeka coming in into that CDM position for this team, Fernandez playing again for the team, Minguesa on left back, Araujo now playing as our centre back, Edgar Ye, oh, actually sorry hold on, there we go, Edgar Ye as the right centre back, Musa Vage as the right back, and then Peña in goal even though we absolutely hate him anyways. But this is the team right now and I think there is space but one failed one, the kid, to come into the team. And you know what? We had Keita Balde Diao, and he just didn't play well at all. I had more success with a youth academy player and also with Manage. And I thought Keita Balde would be amazing, but he wasn't. So I think it's time to bring in a different failed one, the kid, at striker. Let's see if we can find someone that we like. If we're talking about failed one, the kid for the striking position, there's one player specifically that I think of that used to be one of the most used players back in the day in career mode. It is Briel Donald Mbolo, who is currently at Crystal Palace. He has lost a lot of his potential. This guy used to have 88, 89 potential, and now is down to 82. So we're going to go after Briel Donald Mbolo. He is the one that I want to bring into the team. He has just joined Crystal Palace, so it's not going to be easy. We will have to try and somehow convince Crystal Palace to sign, to let go of their new signing. So, um, yeah, let's see if this works out. We're going to offer them our main man, Keita Balde Diao. And on top of it, I'm going to give them a nice little chunk of 25 million just to see what they say. I guess this is a little bit much, but I do want him in the team. They want 36 million plus Keita. Okay. Let's go for 30 then. Come on. Let's make this new transfer happen. A failed one, the kid, to join our squad and improve the reserves team. Yes, there it is. A real Donald Mbolo. I can tell you guys right now what his potential used to be in the past FIFAs. In FIFA 15, this guy had 87 potential. Let me just go through all the years here. here. So in uh, 2015, he had 88 potential up until 2017 then the decline started for him as he dropped down to 86 85 84 83 it's just getting worse and worse for Mbolo and I want to turn his career around and make him a very usable player for our team so let's get him into the squad also by the way as I'm doing this you guys can maybe take a look at the fan objectives. There's been one specific one that got a lot of likes on the last episode. It's from Nico P. And he says, fan object, hashtag fan objective, international power. Get 15 players nominated for the national team. So we have now that one set up as objective number one. If you guys have more objectives, let me know in the comments down below. Hashtag fan objective. We need five more for the entirety of this season. And uh, yeah, 
Let's get into it, man. And then Bolo has signed. Let's get him in. 81 rated, you know. That's two ratings above Balde de Alcata. And with that, we now have an actually decent player at Striker, hopefully. And Estrada is going to be a great backup for him. So this is Mbolo now. 92 pace, 77 shooting, 73 passing, 79 dribbling, 84 physicality, 25 years old, 6 foot 2. I'm not against this deal, man. I really like this one. He's also quite a physical player, if I remember correctly. He does have 88 strength. There you go. With 82 stamina. I mean, he looks very good. Very, very good. So hopefully we can turn his career around. He still has plus two left in his uh, potential for his career in FIFA 21. But maybe we can update that a little bit. Maybe we can get him to the 84 rating in this season if we put him onto the right development plan. So let's find ourselves Mbolo here. Let's put him onto the right one man from switzerland coming in to improve his game let's go for complete striker let's get the uh the shooting up and also the weak foot as much as i like fuentes i think there's one specific player that is just such a sad story to, to not see him do well it is alan halilovic this guy was supposed to be the next big thing i still remember how good he was in career mode he had 90 potential back day man back in the day 90 that is some insane number out of all the failed wonder kids the former barcelona talent is definitely the number one on my list and you know what i'm gonna go and offer uh, a player swap for um fuentes because fuentes has no potential on him anymore so we're gonna offer him in the deal and we're gonna offer them a nice little chunk of money let's give them five million on top of it let's get halilovic back into barcelona let's make this secondary team that we have extremely interesting to watch for you guys and here we go the deal is over the line at 100 overpaid but you know what i don't care i want to get this guy back into the team and i will give him a chance to revive his career at barca and win trophies again so we will do exactly that. Alen Halilovic, come back into the team, pal. Come back to your old Barcelona squad and prove that you are still a very, very skillful player. Two years on his contract. No release clause is perfect for me. And I will also go for 25 cages, uh, 25 cages on his wages. Yeah, let's give him 25 cages filled with birds for his wages and he accepts that because Halilovic is a massive lover of birds not in a weird way just he loves watching them sing in the morning huh I don't know what the hell I just came up with but anyways we have brought in Alen Halilovic into this team right now and I am so excited about it he is 76 rated only one rating above Fuentes but I couldn't care less. It is another failed wonder kid that has returned to Barcelona alongside the likes of Edgar Yeh, Musa Vague. Um, we have now brought in Halilovic in as well. And I couldn't be happier. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to try him out, man. He's going to be an interesting player to use in that camp position. He is now 26 years old, man. Time freaking flies. I mean, I understand that I'm personally in, uh, what is it, season three? So he is technically, I guess, still 23 um, whenever we started the career mode. But still, man, it, it, it just feels wrong. It just feels wrong to hear that he's this old already. I still remember him as like a 16, 17 year old talent. So, uh, yeah, that is a bit of a weird one. We still have 49 million to spend. And I'm looking at this reserves team and I'm thinking, what do we do here? What do we do? Who do we bring in into the squad to take it to the next level? I am looking at centre-back, potentially. I'm seeing Edgar Yeh, sadly not as high-rated. We could turn Edgar Yeh as a into a backup for this team, even though his stats in-game look unreal, by the way. 80 pace, 73 defending, 75 physical. Are you kidding me? But he's 28 years old, so he's not going to grow anymore. But maybe a new centre-back for this team as well. Let's see. I know which player I want to go for for centre-back. It is a player that used to have 88 potential and now has dropped down to 78. Poor old Malangsar. Ah, oh, man, I feel bad for this kid because I really liked him. And then he joined Chelsea and then his career went uh, just down, down, down. And now he's going to be one of them players that just constantly gets loaned out and never gets any playtime in any team in the world. So uh, we need this guy to join into our team to revive his career. We're going to be offering Edgar Yeh as a swap deal. And on top of it, we will offer some money as well. 
Edgar Ria has served us for one year. It's time to move on. And we will bring in this man right here. I don't know how much I am need to pay. But again, I'm going to offer 5 million plus the player. And they want 14 million straight up, which is interesting. So I guess he's not as terrible as I thought. Maybe 10 million on Malangsar would be a good offer. No, they are asking for more still. Let's go for 12 mil then. Let's see what they say. 12 million for Sar. 12.7 is going to be the final deal. We have accepted Malang Sar into the squad. I used to love him. I used to absolutely love him. Even in Ultimate Team, he had a special card, which might have been a future star. I'm not too sure what it exactly was. But this guy was one of my favorite center backs to use. And now he is so bad in career mode. It's such a shame that he has lost so much of his potential to a point where I just never expected anything like this to ever happen. But 78 potential now. I'm not kidding you, by the way. He had he starts off at a 74 and he's now 78 potential. And that's all he has left in his career. And I feel bad for him. He's still only 23. He can still turn his career around. So we're going to give him the time in the team. Three-year contract, no release clause. And then we will give him a nice little chunk of money. 37k he asks for. Balang Sar is now within our team. Edgar Yed drops to the bench of the reserve squad. Sar goes straight in there. 77 rated. A nice little boost to our centre-back spot. A plus three uh, to be exact. And he comes in right there. And Edgar Yed drops onto the bench instead of Garcia. So the bench of our reserves team, by the way, actually looking kind of decent as well now. But Saad coming in with 72 pace, 71 passing, 76 defending, 78 physicality. I like that a lot. He is a high defensive work rate, low attacking work rate center back. That's what you want to have in your team. He has the perfect work rates for the squad. And we're going to get him straight onto a development plan to see if we can grow him even more. Now, we're going to go for the, I guess, the acceleration needs improvement. So let's go for the acceleration improvement here if we can find it. We're going to go for this one, I guess. Stopper it is. Stopper it is. I guess a lot of you guys didn't expect this to happen in today's episode. Three failed wonder kids. And you know what? I want to play a lot of games with the reserves team. And I want fan objectives for the reserves team as well. So give me some of them in the comments down below. I will tell you right now, I will play through the entire Spanish Cup with this team, okay? The reserves team is going to get a lot of focus this year because I'm fully aware that the main team is very, very strong and I want to use this team and challenge myself again in the Cup. So let me know what you guys think about that situation. I think that would be a good challenge for ourselves to see how far we can take some of these talents that used to be great and now aren't anymore and uh, try and build them up alongside with some of the Youth Academy players we have in the likes of Larari, for example. Actually, none of their Youth Academy players in there, but they're on the bench. So uh, keep that in mind. Levante is our next opponent in the league, and I'm going to focus on playing against the big teams only this season because I'm fully aware that you guys aren't really as interested in the smaller matches anymore. But also, we are keeping our rule of having to simulate two games a month. So, the Madrid we played, Levante and Granada, we will have to simulate through and see how things go. And then we will have the transfer deadline day as we beat Levante 1-0. Good stuff right there. Against Granada, what kind of result can we pick up there? Can we get another win onto our record? And yes, well and surely we do. But only... Only one nils, but two clean sheets in three games. I like that a lot about this team right now. We have transfer offers coming flying in for some of our players. We have a, an offer for race. Now, he is a 16.6 million player according to Everton. That's what they think. Cloyvert, we have a swap deal coming in. Cengiz Under for Cloyvert. Ah, nah, this guy has a story. He has a backstory. He is someone that Barcelona... Uh, needs in there because of his dad and then a race i am not against letting him go because he's not a player that i want to use either for the first team and also for the secondary team because we now have on yeka so ludovic race can go we will probably accept the offer straight up 22 year old going for 16.6 million to everton have fun over there pal thank you for your service but it's time to move on by the way last episode there was a comment from philip doherty and he says uh, I'm actually a decent player, a decent FIFA player, says Johnny. Can't keep a clean sheet to save his life. Hey, bro, it's a totally different story in Ultimate Team. Let me tell you that much, okay? <laughs> the clean sheets are just uh, one of the things that I really struggle with in career mode. But hey, 
It is what it is, man. You play an ultimate difficulty with sliders turned on. You'll see that it's very hard to do. We have an offer for Todibo here for 75 million from Arsenal. Um, I'm not against letting go of Todibo because of his comments in real life. Now, I really enjoyed him in the first two seasons, but if we can't get a huge amount of money for him, I will not complain. I really won't. So if we can get 135 million for Todibo, which is basically twice the amount that he's worth, I am going to let him go, or 134 million, actually, to be exact, if we want to go exactly for twice the amount. Um, let's see what they say. If Arsenal is willing to pay that much money, I'm willing to let him go. Nope. Okay, Arteta, you can... Yeah, go back home. Go back home, pal. Bye-bye. Good. See ya. See ya. Bye-bye. Transfer deadline day. Transfer deadline day. Who do we have now with an offer? Race is gone. Araujo has an offer of 35 million. Hmm... Do we let go of Araujo to bring in another player into that centre-back spot? Is that something that we might do? Arsenal trying to sign both of our centre-backs. Interesting to see. Todibo, Todibo they failed with. Let's see if they're willing to pay more for Araujo. I want 60 million for Araujo. Are you willing to pay that, Arsenal? Yes or no? Are you just going to walk out and leave? 35 mil, they're saying again. How about 55? I'm not, I'm not going below 50, I can tell you that much. They go into 49. 50 million for Araujo, yes or no, tell me now, or just bounce out of my office again, Arteta. Yeah, get, get out of here, bro. We were optimistic about completing this deal. Shut up, get out of here. Ooh, Pena's release clause has been met. I love that. Get out of here, Pena. Take care. Where does that leave the rest of us? You know what? I couldn't care less. Pena, peace out, pal. We'll see you somewhere else. Let's get a new goalkeeper in, shall we? Let's get rid of Pena. I think that's actually a good shot. Before he goes out somewhere else where he wants to go for the release clause, I'm going to sell him to a team or, yeah, just swap deal him to a team that he actually doesn't like. So let's see who we can find. I already know who I want to let him go for. I know it already. We had him on the transfer hub, didn't we? Didn't we not have him there? Let's see. Yes, we do. 75 rated Scufe for 76 rated Pena. Sounds like a good deal to me. Let's go for him. You can have Pena. There you go. Take my Pena away. Thank you, Udinese. Enjoy Pena and Pena. You have a good time over there in Italy conceding a bunch of goals. All right. See ya, pal. See ya, pals. This Scufe guy used to be the biggest talent in goalkeeping in FIFA for years upon years. He used to be the one, man. And it's so sad to see how much he has dropped. He used to have 88 potential in 2014. And ever since then, he has dropped and dropped and dropped and dropped. And now he's down to 77 potential. How sad is that? We're going to put him on sporadic first team player. He's uh, probably going to accept that as a 26 year old with a 75 rating. He has not a lot to ask for. If Barcelona wanted him in real life, he would take that upon him immediately and join as fast as he can and do whatever he can to be able to join. He wants a release clause. Come on, bro. Yeah. Stop with that. That's silly talk there. Uh, we're going to go for 15k in his wages. And that is exactly what he wanted as well. So perfect. Scuffe has joined into the team. Or is it Scuffet? How How do you say his name in Italian? Scuffe, I would I would, uh, I would think, right? Or Scuffe. Is that how you say it? I don't know what it is. Let me know in the comments down below how you pronounce his name. But at least one thing that we do know is the fact that the man with no hands... Pena has now left the squad. Get out of here, pal. He is gone. And for that, we have brought in... Where the hell is he? Am I blind? Where's Scuffe? There he is. I found him now. So he's going into the team. And uh, he is coming in with that 75 rating. Six foot four tall. Already twice the goalkeeper that Pena ever was. Look at the new reserves team, by the way. Mbolo, Halilovic, Onyeka, Sar. Uh, then we have Scuffe. I like the new look of the new reserves team, man. I really, really do like it. What do you guys think about it? I enjoy it a lot. I like it a lot. A loan deal offer for Edgar Yeh will not be accepted. He will stick around as a backup for our team for now. So uh, nothing to complain about there. We will keep him within the squad as Upamecano goes over to Paris Saint-Germain for 127 million. Um, that's an interesting deal right there. A lot of money for Upamecano who is joining Bayern Munich in real life. I can't wait to see how he plays for Bayern. Hopefully, he does a good job. By the way, um, we did have a forfeit in which we have to reject a bunch of players for uh, above 1 million in terms of their uh, their money. 
Um, I have already rejected every single player in the scat report for the past two or three months. You guys have just not seen it. I can show it to you here again. Um, we go into the youth staff and you will see that the scout has been looking ever since the 26th of the 11th month of 2022. And we have had plenty of months past that and I haven't signed a single player from the youth academy following through with the forfeit that we had. And I can confirm that by showing you that we still have exactly the same youth academy players as the last time in the last season. You guys can now see that I haven't signed a single one of them. But this Revel, by the way, looks kind of all right for a player that could potentially make his way into our team in the future. So I am excited about him coming into the squad, maybe for the reserves team to play for us there and be a higher rated player than Estrada. Now, this is a big game. Atletico Madrid to start off the, uh, the second episode of the series, of this season, I should say. I am looking forward to that. And then we have Champions League football, which we can probably take on Olympiacos with our new reserves team. How about that? So here we go. Let's jump into the game against Atletico Madrid, who were first last season, if I'm not mistaken. I'm excited to play against them and test our strength of the main team. Here it is. Fati 89, Pedri 87, Trincao 87, Zakaria now in that centre-back position, along with Grimaldo at left-back. I expect a really good performance here. Joao Felix has scored five goals in the last three matches. That already showcases us that we have to worry about his attacks once again, as we always have to. Uh, but here we go, guys. We're starting off the match. We have to get a good result here. We have gotten a draw against Real Madrid. We have seen how good Real Madrid can be. And now we will probably realize how good Atletico Madrid can be once again. As we play it back into Trincao. Trincao over to Pedri. That's a great run. And it's an own goal, isn't it? It's an own goal that we just managed to put in. Or did that bounce off of Pedri? I'm not too sure if it did. But he's celebrating it as if it is his own goal. A strike that went into the back of the net. We will see the replay in just a second. Extremely satisfied with a perfect start into the game. Obviously not with the perfect ball, uh, goal, but with great build-up. As Pedri runs through and it bounces off. Who is that? Lorente? That's for you scoring the goals against Liverpool back in the day, Lorente. This is payback. It took me like a year but or more than that. But here we go, Lorente. Enjoy. And also, um, Chelsea's Rudiger yesterday when he was up, up against Atletico Madrid had a good amount of banter with uh, Lorente and Hermoso so shout out to Rudiger my German lad good job there man oh come on I'm right there I'm right there game oh Lafont makes a save against Joao Felix at the near post incredible save they should have scored from that one 100% I don't know how the hell they didn't what is that for a header? Does he have like a shotgun in his head? How did he get that much power off on that one, man? Condogbia. What the hell was that header? I need to see that again. That header is absolutely ridiculous and should have never gone in. Look at that. The ball is floating, floating, has no power on it. And then Condogbia is like, yeah, I'm going to put 99 shot power on this header. How is that even possible? Look at this. Come on, man. That's ridiculous. 1-1 one, one it is. Well... Two goals in the first 10 minutes. This is going to be a good game. Just like that Real Madrid one. Give me the ball, man. Let's go. Todibo. Quality tackles twice. Let's get the third in. Oh, there's a lot of space now because Todibo pushed out. They're inside the box. Zakaria. Zakaria. He's on it. Joao Felix. They just constantly play the ball around as if I'm not even inside the box with any of my players. It's like I don't exist in this realm for them. Here we go, though. This is now the run of Munir. I see that diagonal to the bottom. Let's take it on to his left. Oh, that was a bad move. Or was it? Was it? Was it a bad move? It wasn't. 32 minutes in. Two goals for Barcelona and one for Atletico Madrid, which shouldn't happen. Shouldn't have happened, in my opinion. I will take that straight away. Great strike from Ansu Fati. An even better build-up right there for Munir, realizing that the fake shot didn't work into his favor initially, and then having to turn back and find Ansu Fati. He does a great job. That is our first goal that we scored ourselves in this goal uh, in this game. So, yeah, not too bad, I guess, against the league winners, the title winners of last year. I think they won it because they were ahead of Real Madrid the last time I saw it in the league table. I, I can't even remember at the moment, but Atletico and Real definitely 
two teams that were at least 10 points ahead of us last season. So we got to do better this year around. In this season specifically, I would like to score a bunch of skillful goals, man. I really would like to. So we're going to try and outskill the AI as much as we can in certain moments to give you guys the nicest of goals that you can see in career mode content as the cross comes over and i try to score a bicycle kick instantly so let's try and score some nice goals as well this year yeah because bazoor just tanking his way through no skills really in that one. Oh, what a ball what a ball and here goes trinko trinko stops again defenders on his toes he's playing it in there we go bang oh yes oh yes it's ansu fati again Lads, the passing play on that one, you gotta give it to him. That was some incredible passing play from the youngsters here, showcasing their strength against the Atletico defense, the defense of Simeone, that a lot of times seems unbreakable, but we just played beautiful football within their box, something that I barely ever get to do. It's most of the time the opponents uh, playing uh, around me in my defense, but that is, for once, us doing it. So that's our second goal that we scored in this game. Uh, still, Lorente started it all, all off for us. Whoop. Whoop. Ha <laughs> ha. Goodbye. Whoop. Oh, I wanted, I wanted a pana. I wanted a pana, man. Here goes Pooj. 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 Oh, go on. Oh, no. It was the Rabona. The Rabona cross. Here goes Ansu Fati. Plays it inside. Pedri, Munir, El Haddadi. Oh, man. I saw them chasing me down. I thought I had a good chance there. 90 plus one. Atletico going for one last attack. I don't want to concede again. As I say that, they actually play it beautifully and they miss. They miss. And with that, we pick up the three points against Atletico Madrid. Come on, lads. Two defeats in two days for Atletico Madrid out of the Champions League in real life against Chelsea and out of this match. Thanks to that man right there, Lorente. I will give you all of it. I will give you all the credit for your team losing. It's all your fault, pal. All on you. So after that game, we're pushing towards the Champions League matchups here. We are up against Olympiacos. Let me know, guys, are you happy with the reserves team now being revamped completely into a failed one? The kids fun haven for us, so to say, just a team that we can just have fun with and challenge ourselves with and just try and get these players to the new heights again. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about that situation. I am excited about it. We will play with the first team probably against Olympiacos, so there's no chance for us to play against them there. But man, this has been an enjoyable episode and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. We brought in three, at least three, really, really good uh, failed wonder kids. Mbolo, Halilovic, Sar, Skufe. Four, four big failed wonder kids have joined today. I hope you guys enjoyed that because I've seen in the comments that a lot of you guys wanted to see failed wonder kids and here they are again. Have a good one. Take care. See you next time. Hit the like button if you enjoyed and peace.